Montoro está al fondo. Montoro lies in the background, an old village plodding over stone spandrels. It looks like a flock of white doves randomly perching on those slabs. Fertile corners of the Sierra Morena, where time sleeps and the soul is soul. These verses by the admired Montoro-born poet Manuel Turin convey the essence of the village of Montoro. Known in Roman times as Epora, it was founded as only of one three federal cities in the Baetica, the other two being Malaga and Cadiz. Montoro's previous population joined the Romans in their fight against the Carthaginians, a gesture rewarded by the signing of a treaty of alliance with Rome, and the village achieved federal status in the year 206 BC. Ipora lies 38 miles from the Arch of Janus, at the beginning of the stretch of the Via Augusta, which runs through the region of Baetica. It is 28 miles from Cordoba, a journey of approximately one day following the Roman Baetica route is followed. The Via Augusta arrives in Epora via Cordoba, along the trail known as the Calada de los Almendros, or Almond Road, where parts of the original paving still survive. Leaving the village, the Via took the road leading to Barca de Adamuth, and from there continued to the settlement of Sakili Marcellum in the Alcurithen estate. Epora is mentioned both in the Antonine itinerary and on the Vicarello goblets. On the first two goblets, the Montoro stop is called Ad Lucos, or place beside the wood, Amancio, or posting station, set amid abundant natural vegetation. But on the last two goblets, it appears as Epora. Two milestones have survived from the stretch of the Via Augusta corresponding to Montoro. One was found in the 18th century and dates back to the 3rd century. The other is from the reign of the Emperor Constantine. Epora occupied a strategic position in Baetica and this was exploited by a number of different civilizations. The earliest settlements within the boundaries of what is now Montoro, on the great promontory overlooking the meandering Guadalquivir River, date back to the Copper Age some 4,500 years ago. 
Later, a thriving ibero turditan nucleus sprang up, possibly exploiting the trade in metals such as silver, copper and tin, which existed between the Tartessian communities in the Guadalquivir Valley and the north of the province. This trade developed with the construction of paved roads. These often had to overcome the problems posed by the mountainous terrain along the route, and the bridge at the southern entrance to Montoro was built to enable the Via Augusta to cross a small stream. The stream bed is now dry, but the mere presence of the bridge indicates that it must once have borne a relatively constant flow of water. The bridge was only discovered a few years ago. It had sunk considerably and had then been hidden in a ditch between two plots of land, where it remained partially buried awaiting excavation. We are on the south-southeast slope of the Llanete de los Moros, the most popular and most important archaeological site in this municipality. It appeared as the consequence of the building of this educational centre which is behind us. What we know about it stems from a series of archaeological interventions which have been intermittently carried out since the beginning of the 80s to the last one in 2001. The importance of this site is based on the fact that it proves continuous settlement in this area since the initial Chalcolithic period, 2,500 years before Christ. And then, the reason for the Llanete de los Moros is more internationally known by the finding of some remains of messianic adscription ceramic with a chronology dated around the 12th or 13th century before Christ, relating this site with all the dynamics of commercial exchanges and cultural flow in the Mediterranean towards the end of the second millennium and beginning of the first millennium before Christ. The first areas to be occupied were the peaks now called Llanete de los Moros and Cerro del Palo Morejo. The Romans conserved the name by which the Greek colonists had previously known the site, Epora meaning seer, a clear allusion to its dominating position overlooking the Guadalquivir. The Cordoba-born poet Juan Bernier described the unique beauty of Montoro. Montoro possesses a totally unspoiled landscape. It has that mirror of a river which observes, surrounds and defines it. The virtue of rejuvenating the wrinkles of human activity as an immaculate image, transforming the pale view of the old into the vibrant colour of a fresh engraving. Ipora always enjoyed a good relationship with Rome and supported Caesar in his wars against Pompeii, a factor which ensured its economic prosperity during the transition from republic to empire. The city was the place of residence of numerous eminent families. Emilius, Cornelius, Julius, Claudius, Lucretius, Fabius, and the services rendered by these nobles are reflected in inscriptions. Monumental architecture began to appear in Montoro in much the same way that it did in neighboring cities like Cordoba. The highly artistic sculptures, architectural remains and funeral monuments discovered here all attest to the town's sharp rise in importance.
two beautiful white marble statues were found in these ruins. One was a life-size statue of a man, standing and wearing a long robe or a toga gathered beneath his arm. On his head, he had the filament or priest crown. The other statue was of a woman, gracefully dressed and reclining on cushions painstakingly carved out of the marble itself. Her breasts were uncovered. Los pechos descubiertos. The Cordoba-born scholar Ramirez Dariano thus describes two of the sculptures found in the area. The sculptures known as Toracatas could depict either mythological beings, above all, Mars and Jupiter, or real people, emperors, members of the imperial family or high-ranking officials. They were placed in public buildings or military camps, and all of them manifest a lack of detail in the carving of their rear part, which suggests that they must have been designed to be displayed in niches. The first of the Montoro Toracatas appeared in the second half of the 18th century in the Cruz Chiquita, on the slopes of the Llanete de los Moros. Today it is conserved in the Archaeological Museum in Malaga. It was found in 1989 in a plot of land in Cervantes Street, in the area of expansion of the municipality, very near to the place which today is the Palomorejo site. As you can see, it is a sculpture made on a block of marble, perfectly chiseled and polished on both sides. That is to say, it was made in order to be shown on its own, not attached to any wall. A victory is represented in the same, as well as a representation of Oceanus and Tellus. Although both items appeared alone with no trace of their original context, they are believed to have been sculpted between the late 1st and early 2nd centuries. In the Roman times, military sculpture is essentially important to explain all the propaganda phenomena. Since when the empire reached such a large size, it was difficult for those subjects of the Roman Empire to be acquainted with the effigy of the emperor ruling at the time, or of generals and celebrities. So it was very frequent to make sculptures presenting a body and then changing the heads depending on the person who was in power at that moment of time. Another valuable source of information about Montoro's past is provided by numismatics. Greek coins have been found dating from the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC, and this proves that the towns in the area were in contact with Eastern Mediterranean civilizations. The archaeological museum in Cordoba conserves two hordes of coins bearing dates corresponding to the Republican period of Rome and a third discovery made in Caia Cervantes. Almost 4,000 coins showing the heads of different emperors from the Lower Empire period. Following the fall of the Roman Empire, Epora converted to Christianity at the beginning of the 4th century. The town was occupied by the Visigoths until the end of the 6th century. The inscriptions on the door of the parish church of San Bartolome bearing witness to this period in its history. But it was during the Moorish occupation that the area once again experienced a moment of splendor. Ipora had its name changed to Cantara Estesan, apparently a reference to a bridge. The Moors rebuilt the town's ramparts and erected an Alcazaba, the site of which is now occupied by the sanctuary of Santa Maria de la Mota and houses the archaeological museum.
On the 24th of August, 1240, St. Bartholomew's Day, the city was finally conquered by King Ferdinand III, the saint. In the modern period, Montoro experienced an economic boom, which resulted in considerable construction work. The town's most emblematic buildings were built at this time, such as the Church of San Bartolome, its patron saint, which took a century to build and was finally completed at the end of the 15th century. Other unmistakable landmarks in Montoro are the Church of El Carmin and the Puente de la Donadas, or Bridge of Donations, which crosses the river between the historic town centre and the Retamar quarter, and which was built thanks to the donations of jewellery made by local maidens. During the Napoleonic invasion, Montoro played an important and heroic role and was subsequently officially named noble, loyal and patriotic by King Ferdinand VII. Montoro's agricultural landscape is marked by numerous rural properties linked to the cultivation of olives. Since olive oil mills were built in the modern age, the olive has become the town's principal source of wealth. Its olive oil, soon to be protected under the Montoro Adamus denomination of origin, is a key element in local cuisine and essential for typical dishes such as ajo sopao, garlic soup, milk cap mushrooms in sauce, loin of venison and stuffed aubergine. Leatherwork and harnessings are traditional crafts in Montoro, and some workshops have been engaged in their production since 1850. The local forges are also heirs to centuries of tradition. The ironmongers in the area produce many different items, including tables, lamps and chairs. Festival time comes to the village with the annual Romaria, or pilgrimage of the Virgin de la Fuente Santa, and the celebrations dedicated to Saint Anne and to Our Lady Nuestra Señora del Carmen. The Olive Fair is held every two years during the first fortnight in May. It is the oldest fair in the sector and the second in importance.
But if there is one truly outstanding event in Montoro, it is Semana Santa or Holy Week. The celebration involving processions through the streets with 20 religious images belonging to the village's nine brotherhoods has been declared an event of national tourist interest in Andalusia. Located alongside the A4 road, Montoro conserves its strategic importance in terms of communications. It constitutes an unavoidable gateway to the province, just 40 minutes from the capital city, Cordoba. Officially declared a historic artistic ensemble in 1969, few cities in Andalusia possess such a Castilian aura as Montoro. Red and white, carved out of three outcrops of grindstone and bathed by the Guadalquivir, the village jealously guards a number of discreet but stunning beauty spots. This is one stop on the Roman Baetica route in which the visitor will be blissfully unaware of the passage of time.